All right, so this is gonna go over pages six and seven in your projectiles packet. So we're gonna do a little bit of recap over horizontal motion. So remember our horizontal motion is considered VX. Okay, we're just throwing that X on that V because X means horizontal. So velocity, that V stands for velocity, so VX is going to be constant the entire time. Okay, so that means if an object rolls off the horizontal velocity of five meters per second, that horizontal velocity is gonna stay five meters per second the entire time. So therefore, we do not have a horizontal acceleration. Okay, so there is no AX, okay, because it's going constant. The only equation we ever need to use for horizontal is VX equals DX over T. So again, that little X is just telling me that's a horizontal velocity and a horizontal distance and time. That is the only thing you'll need for anything horizontal. Now, vertical, you have VY, so that's why we're throwing a little Y on there, so your vertical velocity. Changes due to gravity. So remember, gravity is going to make things speed up or slow down, okay, depending on how you throw it. If I drop something, gravity is going to make it speed up. If I throw something up in the air, gravity is going to make it slow down. But regardless, we're talking about type 1 projectiles where you're rolling off of some type of surface. So your initial vertical velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. Okay, so our acceleration is going to be due to gravity. So AY is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's not going to change. And if you want to solve for anything vertically, that's going to be using Daffy T. Okay, now it says which component determines the time that a projectile is in the air? If you look, you have VX, DX, and T. Okay, and that is for your horizontal side. So that can solve for time if you need time, but you have to have VX and DX in order to do that. You can also solve it on your vertical side. You can set up your Daffy T. Okay, so you can find T there, but you have to have at least three of those things to be able to solve that. So those are both options to find time. The key thing here is that time is universal. What that means is that time can go back and forth between both the horizontal side and the vertical side. It's the only value that can actually do that because it's the only value on there that does not have direction. So time is scalar, so it means it has no direction. So we're actually gonna do a problem now. So an object rolls off a four meter high cliff. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna draw our cliff. It's four meters high. And it rolls off the horizontal velocity of five meters per second. So it looks like this. And here's our trajectory. It says, how long will the object take to hit the ground? So that means we're looking for time. So when you do this setup, what I want you to do is that we call it a T-chart, is we're going to find a way to organize our horizontal side and our vertical side. So remember, our horizontal side is going to be VX, DX, and T. Those are the only three things. So if you go back up here, those are the only three things that matter horizontally. Now, vertically, if you look back up here, you're going to have to set up your Daffy T. So if I ask for anything vertical at all, just go ahead and set up your Daffy T. So we're going to fill in what we know. Object rolls off a four meter high cliff. Okay, that is going to be a, that is going to be a vertical distance, a four meter high cliff. So that we're going to put that on the vertical side, on the Y side. And since we're falling, we're going to make that a negative four. Okay, so since it's going down... We're going to throw that negative in there because you'll see where that makes sense whenever we start doing our math, and it'll clean up your signs. Now, it says it rolls off the horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay, I even drew it here, so my horizontal side is my left side, so that means my Vx is 5. Now, that's all it gave us, but there's a couple other things that are implied. On the vertical side, gravity is pulling it down, so A is negative 9.8. And then our VI, remember before it falls, its initial vertical velocity is going to be zero. Okay, so that means we are looking for time. Now, if you notice, I do not have enough on my X side to even solve for that. I have VX, but I don't have DX, so I definitely can't solve for time on the left side. On the right side, I do. Okay, VF didn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line through that. And so now what that's going to do is that's going to tell me which equation to use. So if you look on your formula sheet, you're going to use that third equation. The one associated with VF. You do not want to use the one associated with T. Okay, so I'll show you what that equation is. That's VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Okay, so if you notice, T is not even in it. 
Okay, so there's no point in using that equation if T is not even in it, and that's what you're looking for. So you're going to use that third equation, which is D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Okay, so VI is zero, so we can go ahead and mark off this whole VIT. Okay, do not keep that T because zero times T is zero. Okay, so that whole thing disappears. So it's basically just D equals one half AT squared. So D is going to be negative 4 equals 1 half, A is negative 9.8, T squared. Okay, so what I would do is I would take what is 1 half times negative 9.8, well that's negative 4.9, and we're going to divide both sides by negative 4.9, and that's going to give you 0 0.82 equals T squared. Now, two things here is now you see where that negative came into play, because if you, if you ended up with a negative 0.82, and you try to take a square root of that, it's not going to work. You're going to see an error symbol. Okay. Also, which brings me to the next point is do not forget this squared. I've seen it where it just magically disappears or students forget to square root it at the end because you got to get rid of that squared. So T equals 0 0.91 seconds. So that is your time, how long it takes to reach the bottom. So we just solve for this, but remember time is universal. So that means I can also take that 0.91 and bring that over to the left side. Because if you look at B, B says, what is the range? Remember, range is the horizontal distance. That is how far you hit it horizontally. Okay, so now I have time because we're going to use VX equals DX over T. VX is 5, DX we don't know, and time is going to be 0 0.91 seconds. So multiply both sides by 0.91, and you're going to get a horizontal distance of 4.55 meters. And there's your answer. Okay, moving on to the next page. A soccer ball is kicked horizontally from a roof. Okay, so we're going to draw our little structure here. They all look the same eventually. Okay, so we have a ball kicked horizontally, and it lands 40 meters away. Okay, so what that told me is it told me my range. It told me how far horizontally did it go. Okay, so be careful with that. It's real easy to get things mixed up. Now, if I said 40 meters below, that would be your vertical distance. But in this case, I said 40 meters away. Now, the ball is in the air for 4.8 seconds. So that's all it gave us. And it wants to know what is the height of the roof. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our T-chart. So we have our X and our Y. So VX, DX, and T. And we're going to set up our Daffy T on the vertical side. So we're going to plug in what we know. It told us the ball lands 40 meters away. That is our horizontal distance. So we're going to put that 40 right there. And it told us our time is 4.8 seconds. So I can actually put that on both sides. So it says, how high is the roof? So that means you're looking for the vertical distance. Okay, remember A is negative 9.8 and VI is going to be zero. Okay, so if we're looking for how high the roof is, that means we don't care about final velocity. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that third equation again, and we're going to save some time. So we're going to get rid of that VIT, and it's just D equals 1 half AT squared. So D, we don't know, equals 1 half negative 9.8 times T squared, so 4.8 squared. So this should be basic math. Okay, now technically when you do this math, it's going to come out negative. So you can write negative 112.9 meters, or you can just write the height, because technically I'm asking for the height. Okay, but I'll accept either one because the negative just means that's how far it's falling. But if I'm asking for the height of a roof, typically people wouldn't say it's a negative 112.9 meters. But either one works just fine. Okay, so that would be your answer. B is what is the initial horizontal velocity? Okay, so if you notice when we were setting this up, we had dx, we had t. So be careful with this. I've seen people where they just see this and they go ahead and start solving for it. And I may not even ask for it. Okay, so in part A, if you started solving that, if you started solving that, okay, it wasn't what A was even asking for. So be careful with that. So part B is asking for what is the horizontal velocity. So VX equals DX over T. So 40 over 4.8. Okay, and that's going to give us a velocity of 8.33 meters per second. Okay. Part C is what is the velocity of the ball after 2.5 seconds? Find the resultant magnitude and the direction. Okay, so remember resultant equals hypotenuse. Okay, and direction means your angle. 
So when we have an object falling, again, this part is not going to be a bulk of your quiz or test. This is just going to be one question possibly on each on the quiz and test. But when you have an object that's falling diagonally like this, it's a mixture of both vertical, sorry, horizontal and vertical motion. Now, again, you can draw your triangle however you want it. You can go down first and then over. Your angle will just be different than mine. So what we're doing is we're looking for X and we're looking for angle. We're looking for a hypotenuse in our angle. In order to do that, we need to know both of our sides to the triangle. I already know my horizontal velocity. That's never going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and put it right here. But I do not know what is my vertical velocity after 2.5 seconds. I don't know what this is. Okay, so remember, if I'm looking for something vertical, we're going to set up Daffy T. So step one is I need to figure out what is that velocity after 2.5 seconds. So A is still negative 9.8. VI is still zero. Okay, time I just told you is 2.5 seconds. VF is now your question mark. That means we did not care about distance. So again, be careful with this because even though I know this I know this height right here, okay, this is after 2.5 seconds. So it may not even have hit the ground at that point, which it didn't because we know up here it takes 4.8 seconds to hit the ground. So be careful with that. Just don't throw in the height of the cliff if you know it automatically because you may not even hit the ground yet. So you're just using the time of 2.5 seconds. So that means we're going to use equation number one on your Daffy T list, which is VF equals VI plus AT. So VF we don't know. VI is zero, so I'm going to ignore that. So basically equals A, which is negative 9.8, times T, which is 2.5 seconds. So I'm just going to multiply those, and I'm going to get negative 24.5 meters per second. Okay, so you can write negative just means it's falling. So what that means is we just solved this. So that's not our answer to the question, but now if you notice, we have two sides of a triangle. So now this should be basic review. If I know two sides of a triangle and I want to know the hypotenuse, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So step two, x equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So 8.33 squared plus negative 24.5 squared. Okay, so that is going to come out to our hypotenuse of 25.9 meters per second. Step three is I want to know the direction now. I know my opposite side, so I'm going to use a different color on here. This is going to be my opposite. This is going to be my adjacent. Okay, so that means we're going to use tangent. Okay, so remember our angle is we got to bring that tangent over, so it's going to be inverse tangent. Okay, if you start doing this enough times, you start realizing it's the exact same pattern Every single time, we're always going to use inverse tangent because we know opposite and adjacent. So we're going to do opposite over adjacent, so negative 24.5 over 8.33. Again, make sure you're in degree mode in your calculator. And you're going to get, now you can write negative, you can write positive, I honestly don't care. Okay, so 71.2 degrees, and we're going to say it's below the horizontal. Okay, that just means it's that's how far it's fall, falling below the horizontal plane. And there's your answer for that, and that'll end the video.